So I'm working on a project with community development. Just uh, it's all centered around COVID and the effects of COVID, everything that happened during COVID and the resources for it. Um, a lot of individuals started businesses during COVID. And when I looked at exactly what you guys do, I was like, I think you guys would be uh, a great resource to interview. So for someone who's started a business fresh out of COVID, we see you guys got the coaching, financing, the branding, uh, the shared space. What was the, what was the, there was a fifth one? Uh, training. Trainings as well. How do people get here? Like how do they become a part of this? Welcome to the Pulse Project. Pandemics had an effect on everyone, whether it's physical health, mental health, effects of being isolated, financial stress, and more. This project's designed to show you the resources you have available to help you move forward during these tough times. Welcome to the Pulse Project. It's been brought to you by Bank, Community Development Partnership, and Witty Media. We are the staff of the Greenhouse Lab. And uh, we'll probably get into what we do here in a second, but I'm the executive director. My name is John Jordan, um, and I am a resident of Aliquippa. I've been here about 15 years, not originally from here. But I've lived here for about 15 years, and I've served in various capacities at Aliquippa Impact, a co-owner at Equip Books just down the street here on Franklin Avenue, uh, and then also a part-time pastor at a church uh, called the Gospel Tabernacle. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, my name is Carrie Ann Brown. I work here as the financial coordinator at Greenhouse Lab. So I get to work with people and set up like QuickBooks or just help them organize like their bank accounts and how to financially support uh, individuals looking to run a business or a uh, nonprofit or any of those things. So. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, my name is Akira Thompson. I work as the branding and marketing specialist here. Um, I also live in Aliquippa, and I also work for Aliquippa Impact. I hear you guys totally did. I didn't hear much about your background, uh, but I hear, you know, social media, marketing, branding, finance. What, what do you guys do here? Yeah, so the mission of the Greenhouse Lab is to help people start things, really. Kind of overall, we want to see renewal in our community. We kind of were born out of this community development um, idea here. Being connected to Aliquippa Impact led us to want to see our community be revived. And so uh, one of the things that started happening was people were coming around, getting excited about seeing renewal in Aliquippa. And so they were starting businesses like the bookstore or they were starting nonprofits. Um, there's several people sort of in our network that were, you know, launching new things. And so we wanted to give more of, um, more of a structure for that to happen, to a more of a support system for that to happen. So the Greenhouse Lab, it, we like to call it a social impact incubator. So we want to see our community revived as people start businesses and nonprofits um, and even uh, even community impact projects, like even if somebody wanted to start a community garden, they didn't want it to be a business or anything, they just wanted to benefit the community, well, we want to help them launch that thing and get that thing off the ground. What are all of your roles in that? I heard your titles, but like, how do you guys mesh together? Like, how, you know what I mean? Like, what do you offer specifically to someone who's trying to start? A business like that. Sure. So we have a service platform and Carrie Ann and Akira uh, referred to their role a little bit, but our service platform is fivefold. We do coaching. So we set people up with a coach that can walk them through the project, walk them through the things that they're, the obstacles they're coming up against, ask good questions, things like that. We have trainings and we uh, we will get into like how we do that. We have two main courses that we offer um, that are kind of our training piece and then we have the financial services, um, which Carrie Ann oversees, so she can talk more about that. We have marketing services, which Akira oversees, and she can talk a little bit about that. And then um, we have a shared workspace here at the lab. So the physical space that people can come if they need meeting space, if they need you know, just to be somewhere out of the home, co-working with other people. And uh, it's just space that people can use when they take part in our, in our courses. So... Um, those are the, those, that's the main service platform. And I, you know, I spoke a little bit about coaching and training. Carrie Ann, why don't you mention some of, you know, how you help people with finances? 
Sure. Um, so it can be on a really individual basis. Everyone kind of is at different places and that's perfectly fine um, and acceptable in that. Like sometimes it's like, I have no idea what I'm doing or hey, I've dabbled in this and I've gotten this far and like help me with this next step or something like that. Um, and I think it's like a really great space to connect with people, find out their why behind why are you starting whatever you're starting and where do you need the most resources that you might need to accomplish it. Um, sometimes it's setting up a um, financial like system, say like a QuickBooks or Zero or something to help them with their accounting um, and just walk through the processes of that. Um, and it can also just be, I've never done anything with banking. How do I start something for my business and start tracking it that way as opposed to keeping my business and my personal stuff together? Um, and it really just depends on what an individual might need in that case. And we talk about it, we group together, and then we say, okay, what's the game plan that works best for you? Okay. Yeah, we also train on like budgeting, setting up a budget, because a lot of people have never even thought about like, oh, I've never tracked anything, much less like budgeted anything. So Carrie Ann mm -hmm. also helps with that as well. Okay. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Chris Padgett the other day, and he was talking about, he said, man, I want to I'm going to run my business without going to jail. He's like, I don't know what to, what, what to do. Like, what, what's a rule of thumb for someone who's starting a business as far as taxes go? I would say one of the most important steps um, to start taking is you definitely need to track what is only related to business and only related to personal. And I get that's kind of tricky sometimes because it's like, well... I do this part, but that affects me personally and in my business. And it's really keeping them separate and um, having a separate bank account that all your business money comes in and out of solely and keeping that separate is like probably your number one starting point and best tip to keep keep things separate that way. Cool. Yeah, we had a training. One of our board members is a CPA and he came in and did a training. And the comment at the end of the night from one of the participants was, I need to treat my business money like my ex-boyfriend i need to just leave it over there and not worry and not like not like touch it <laughs> so she was she was seeing for the first time you know like i need to separate this out i need to have a bank account over here that i'm not always taking personal finances from and all that kind of thing so that that's a really good point point. and then we also emphasize to people hey we don't we don't do tax filing here, so we want to put you in touch with some you know tax experts. But if you do this step that Karen's talking about, keeping it separate, then that goes a long way for when you're filing your taxes. Okay, all right. First, let me tell you guys why I'm here. So I'm working on a project with community development. Just uh, it's all centered around COVID and the effects of COVID, everything that happened during COVID, and the resources for it. Um, a lot of individuals started businesses during COVID. And when I looked at exactly what you guys do, I was like, I think you guys would be a, a great resource to interview. So for someone who's started a business fresh out of COVID, we see you guys got the coaching, financing, the branding, uh, the shared space. What was the, what was, there was a fifth one. Uh, training. Trainings as well. How do people get here? Like how do they become a part of this? Yeah. So we have two main courses that we offer that are really like the entrance points. And the first one is, uh, we call it innovate. It's a three month course and it's, it's really about taking your idea. So people who have a dream of starting a business, um, or a nonprofit, and they don't really know like how to, how to put that into a plan. And so we, um, we work together for three months. We meet twice a month. They also have a coach outside of those sessions. And then there's some other open office hours that they can come and work on this idea. And, and the whole goal is, you know, take that dream um, and put it into a plan that they can start acting on and moving forward and actually getting that thing off of the ground. So that's step one. Step two then is uh, another course that um, is actually kind of we put more and more resources into this one. Uh, because it, we call it Cultivate, it's for a whole year. And what we're trying to do there is walk with people who have launched that business. And now, you know, once you get started, that's when the real kind of like help is, is needed to establish that thing and get that thing um, profitable and successful. And so we walk through the year with people. We meet once a month, but more than that, they're meeting with Carrie Ann, they're meeting with Akira, they're you know, Akira just did like professional headshots for the people in our Cultivate course as like a something they need, like right from the jump to 
to start putting themselves out there. We're working on setting up budgets with them and accounting, and we're bringing in trainers to train them on different uh, topics. And then they have that coach with them for you know that year to really get them th- get their business or their nonprofit established and and off and running with a good start. Okay, so for that three month, the innovate. Yep. Um, if I came to you with the business, like what is what is step one to figuring out that identity, turning that dream into? A business. I don't want to spoil, give a spoil away, but like, what's a, what's a tip? Like, where do you encourage people to start with that? Yeah. So a lot of times we talk about starting with why, okay. um, and that's a, there's a guy out there by the name of Simon Sinek. You could Google him. He gave a Ted talk that became pretty famous, but Carrie Ann mentioned this even as she was talking, uh, you know, a lot of people can say what they do. Um, they may even be able to say how they do it, Um, But the best companies out there can tell you why they do everything that they do, because from that place flows all the motivation. And like if, you know, it it takes somebody who is going to work hard and be persistent. And um, an entrepreneur is not like, you know, everybody walking down the street is an entrepreneur. I think an entrepreneur is somebody who is going to be tenacious and go after things. And they've got to know why they're doing what they're doing. Um, And uh, there's all kinds of reasons. Um, People give us all kinds of reasons. But as long as you know what that reason is, why you're doing what you're doing, um, then that goes a long way to getting you down the road. Okay. So I got my dream. I figured out why. I figured out my why is, uh, you know, I want to give back to my neighborhood. What's the next step after why? Really putting you guys on the spot here. (laughs) You guys want to share some things? I don't want to talk the whole time. I guess I'm kind of thinking of just like the curriculum that comes with the course, I guess. So it's kind of just like that is the question. Like you're coming in here and you're like, I don't know what the, I don't know what's after the why. And so I think it's kind of just like coming up with like the different pieces of what you're doing. So like I'm doing this because like I want to see like I work at Alcop Impact because I want to see the youth in my community like come up and be strong in what they do. <clears throat> But now it's like, how am I going to tell that story? How am I going to get myself out there? How am I going to develop, like, what I already have? Um, so, like, in my role, I kind of help people come up with, like a, like, a brand that looks consistent. So, like, it looks professional. Like, it's kind of all put together. Like, they're not using a different font or a different color every time. And it's not a distraction. Like, it's not, like oh, is this a spam link that I'm going to click? Or, like, is this, like, the real thing? It's, like, you can kind of see that everything's consistent. It's telling their story, what they're doing, why they're doing it. And, like, you can, like, look at it in a cohesive way. And so it's kind of starting while you're helping them grow their brand. They're, like, giving you, like, different colors that they want. Like, maybe that color, like, means something to them or, like, they really like the way this font looks. I think it, you kind of start to build up after you have your why. Like, whether you're meeting with me or Carrie Ann or your coach, I feel like the people in the community around you kind of start to, they get you talking about what you're passionate about and then you kind of get more out there and then you just start to like build on what you already have okay is there a a difference between branding and marketing and what what is that difference so i would say branding is like fonts colors logos okay and like that's kind of its own entity and then marketing is like how you use those logos fonts and colors so it's like marketing could be more like your messaging or like how you're trying to get to people whether it be through like social media or like having things printed off and putting it up like that's how you market yourself but you market yourself through your brand okay does that make sense yeah so like brand is like almost who you are which is where the colors and everything come from like it's like your identity sort of and then marketing's like uh i guess like, Basically selling, like how do I yes. get it to you in front of yeah. you? How are you telling your story? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Right. Yeah. And then uh, another piece of like, I think your question of, okay, so how am I going to do that? I got this dream. I got the why. Uh, spoiler you know, alert. We use something called the Lean Canvas model. So you can Google that. It's, it's really kind of a business plan for early, early stage entrepreneurs. And it's answering the basic questions of a business plan, really. Um, but in a visual map. Um, and so there's there's like nine boxes to the lean canvas. And it it's sort of a, uh, uh, like I said, a visual map for people to follow and, and determine like, 
who is my who is my target audience? What is the problem that my target audience has? What is the solution that I offer this group of people? How am I unique from Sally down the street who also is, you know, doing this or, you know, the Burger King or, you know, how am I unique from these other things? Um, how am I going to tell my story? How am I going to have finances and, you know, startup funding or how am I going to keep track of this stuff? And, uh, and so we, we work people through that lean canvas, uh, over those six weeks. And, uh, and when they're done with that, like you can turn that into a longer form business plan, but for a lot of people, that's like everything that they need to like give them direction, um, for where to go next. Okay. And is that a part of the innovate or is that something That's different? That's a part of innovate. It's a part of it. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so I, 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 w- I really want these individuals who have started businesses through COVID to really see the value in this. Like what, why should they come here with you guys? I feel like you guys are so valuable for them. Why, in, in your opinion, why should they come here? You know what I mean? I think when you're starting all these things, sometimes you can feel really like alone in it. And there's just this support group that I think is necessary. Even if it's okay, like I need help in this area, but um, someone else has like gone through this, even a different entrepreneur in the group is like, yeah, I experienced this and I had to go through these steps to kind of make my way through here. And that might relate directly to you, but you can take and give pieces back and forth too. So it's not all just take, for the, the individual showing up, they're definitely giving back in those support systems as well. Facts. Right. And I've, you build that community, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And it, it almost helps you keep going because I feel like a lot of people who started businesses in are kind of falling off. But we've mm-hmm. seen yeah. with the pandemic that you almost, depending on your job, you kind of need to start your own thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that kind of community could encourage you to keep going. You were about to say something? Yeah, I mean, I think Carrie Ann hit the nail on the head because I think there's probably a lot of people out there who know a whole lot more about business and other things than we do. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like we're using the things that we have um, and we're trying to serve as best that, uh, that we can. But I think the key is that, you you know, you're not just, it's not just all the knowledge, it's the people around you and the community. And and I feel like what's building here is sort of like a, an ecosystem uh, for entrepreneurs to, you know, like Carrie Ann said, there's another person that's, that's been through this before. They, they've hit that wall or they've had to cross that bridge before. And what you're getting is the access to relationships and people uh, who may have may have done that same thing before or can maybe just give you a little bit of encouragement along the way. It's like a time machine. Man. You get to go back like, and not make the mistakes that they made. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or something they might have learned this month. You don't have to wait years to learn that. You can learn it just by building that relationship with them and being a student. Mm-hmm. That's probably the most important thing. Like you got to know how to listen. You know, because I mean? a lot of people just want to prove, prove, prove. But I um, was just I was just talking to John about this because I was like, honestly, coming into my role, like I didn't really know what I was doing because I went to school for social work, and now I'm like helping people create brands for their businesses, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, well, like we can try this out, we can like kind of pop this and see what this looks like, and so I think it's also just like in the community and in those relationships, like you see other stuff, like you have like patience and trust with other people. And it's like, I've just like seen that come up in different areas. Like even like during the sessions, people will kind of like feed off of each other and like they're more open to talk about their experience for one, or like even places where they're not super secure, like not everybody loves having their photo taken. And so when we did those headshots, there was two women who like had them done and they were kind of just like hyping each other up like, oh, you look so good. And oh, you look so happy. And then like you can get you're able to tell their story easier because they're not just like cheesing and looking like frozen in the picture. It's like right. they're like authentic smile and like mm-hmm. they're just like very chill. But again, it's kind of coming from that community and like that is coming out in their headshots, which is like a still image. And so I think it's just like I've seen like the like the grassroots work of like relationships and community like like weasel its way into other areas that are super important that are just like it just feels like natural and organic okay i feel it man okay 
So what else do you guys have going? Oh, I guess my question, do you have to do innovate then cultivate or is it depend on who they are and how they come in? No, it really depends on where they are in the life of their organization. <clears throat> so if you've already launched this thing and, you know, you have a, a plan in place, but you just need like that help, then you can jump, you know, straight into cultivate. And that's, that, that's totally fine. But a lot of people have already launched, but they never really did the front end work of planning. And so a lot, some people come to us and they say, you know, here's where I'm at. I've already been doing this for a little bit, but I don't feel like I put a plan in place. I don't feel like I have a roadmap. And so then we suggest, you know, start with Innovate. Um, and so Innovate is a mix of people that have never launched anything before, and they're trying to get into a plan, or people that have, have, have sort of done some things, but they need to go back to that planning stage. Uh, and then Cultivate, can you can go straight in there, um, but it just kind of depends on where you're at in your organization. And so very practically, we have um, right now, we have Innovate that's launching um, here. Actually, we have an orientation tonight, and that group is kind of full. I have a waiting list, which is a good thing. Um, we're, we went, you know, we kind of uh, almost doubled uh, what we had in the spring in the fall, so there's definitely demand for it. Um, and so right now we have one in the fall, one in the spring. We may have to expand that. Um, and, and then Cultivate is a, kind of a continuous year-long course, but we have entry points in June. We launched it in June. We have an entry point coming up in October that we're going to be putting out on social media uh, real soon here, and then another entry point in February. So people can kind of come into that course at different places. You stay in for a year, and then you graduate. So that's kind of how that works on a practical level. Man, that's what's up. I think, I think you guys are really a part of... Um breaking some cycles because um, you guys are in the heart of the Mecca of football. This is the football Mecca, you know, where the culture that a lot of us are trying to fight. And I'm not even from here. I'm from Beer Falls, but the culture is the same where it's sports, you know, NFL or bust entertainment. And you guys like what, what are some, do you feel like you deal with challenges because of that culture? I don't know. I feel like in my time in Aliquippa, I've heard that narrative a lot, but mm -hmm. I also hear a lot of people like challenging that narrative and championing other narratives like, hey, it doesn't have to be football. It could be the arts. It could be business. It could be community development. Like it can, you know, it can be, you know, various avenues. And actually, uh, the first thing I thought of when you were saying that was there's a couple of, you know, young men now that I got to know when they were in elementary school in Aliquippa, they both played football. They pursued football for a while, um, but now they're actually starting businesses and the lab has been able to serve them. So I, you know, like I knew them in fifth grade and now they're 25, 26 years old. And, and we've been able to be a part of their story on this side. And, uh, and, and they were football guys and they did that. But, you know, like as they're getting into adulthood, they're like, seeing, I, I think, I think there's, I think there's an entrepreneurial spirit right. around here, around Aliquippa, around, Be uh, you know, Beaver Falls, around Beaver County. Like, I think you see pockets of that and, um, and people are going after this stuff. And, you know, we haven't had to do a lot of marketing as a lab. It's kind of word of mouth and our stuff is filling up. And that's a, that just shows you right. that our, our county, like there's people that want to do these new and innovative things. Right. And that's a testament to the impact, you know, knowing these kids at five and at 25, because my generation, I'm about 35. Um, majority of the individuals who played sports and didn't make it and didn't kind of get a, a career job all ended up selling drugs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they're either trying to repair their lives. We're all trying to repair our lives at this age or you know, what I mean, we're, we're deep into prison or, or other things. So I think you're really looking at the testament of the things that, you know, you guys, the work that you put in back then, that's huge. You know what I mean? That's big to me. So congratulations to everybody. Cause I know the Franklin centers, yep. they're fighting back. Yep. Of course, G collective, but they're young. Um, a lot of people are just fighting back and, and I love to see that, you know, I love to see that. Um, so anything else that you guys want to, let the people know about like is there any way that people could help out let you know what their expertise are if I, I heard i know there's coaching mm -hmm. and i don't know how that process works are you guys yeah. the coach or do you guys find coaches we find coaches Not a coach. 
<laughs> Is that you're not a coach. You're a marketing not, coach. Yeah. Financial coach. No, uh, we find the coaches. So we, that is something I love to continue to expand. Uh, if, you know, coaches don't have to be experts in everything either, which is a good thing. Coaches are really people who ask good questions, but it's also great if they've been there before. So we would love people to come around and say, hey, I, I you know, have a business mind. I ha- I've, I started a nonprofit. I've worked, you know, like worked in this field. I would love to be a coach like that is super helpful. People that, you know, I, I try to get, you know, not be in front of people all the time, like finding more and more people to be in front of people. So if there's somebody who has, a, you know, expertise in, in, in a field, uh, f- you know, we can look at them to be a trainer or, uh, or something like that. But yeah, we're always looking for coaches and trainers. Okay. Yeah. I think I got a lot of names for you guys. So if you ever just have somebody, but Hey, this guy's over in agriculture. I'm like, oh, I know. You know, I, I connect with a lot of people on the entrepreneurial level, just trying to learn yeah. and they're always willing to share. So, well, you're on uh, my list too. So I'm, just, I'm on your list. Just uh, so you know, okay. I'm going to be talking to you soon. Hey, there's a way I got value. I hope, you know, <laughs> but, you know, um, so yeah. Um, is there any other way that the community can, you know, help out? Like, what else do you guys need? I'm sure donations are always needed. We're not going to turn down <laughs> donations. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, I think that uh, one of the things that we, one of the things we want to get into really is um, an, an idea that has been floated is uh, a, a directory of sorts of like local entrepreneurs and things like that. So, you know, like as we build a network of, as we build a network of people who have done this before and have been down this road, like, you know, it, we would love to just be connected with more and more people so that we can build this ecosystem. So whether they can, you know, coach or train or not, like just to know like, hey, we got, you know, we have, you know, 10 you know, entrepreneurs in this field here in, you know, Beaver County, we have four over here in this field, you know, like kind of building a directory of sorts. Uh, we just, we just, uh, want to connect people and network and, and help out these, these new, newly found organizations. Okay. Yeah. That'd be dope. That'd be real dope. Um, one question finance wise, do you guys help people figure out how to fund? How to fund? Um, I'm not saying we couldn't make connections with that. I would say right now I'm not necessarily um, currently like delving into that. Okay. Um, that could be a place that someone else has ex- more experience in that, hey, pr- if you have that and you want to bring bring yourself on in, please donate that to us. <laughs> like okay. It's not all about donating financial, physical money to. Um, the donation part can be like, I have this resource in that. Um there are some things in the works there. Um, one is that in our Cultivate session coming up here in October, we're having uh, somebody from uh, Bridgeway Capital uh, who is, uh, they, they do a lot of funding in under-resourced communities for businesses. So um, we're having a representative from them come and speak, another representative from Kiva, which is a sort of like a... Um, sort of like a crowdsourcing, um, but it's not just your own crowd. It's like a national organization where people can give into like Kickstarter campaigns and things like that for your organization and invest in you. And then uh, we also have, as people are starting nonprofits, then we have trainings on like grant writing um, and and we have them working through um developing a funding plan for how they're going to go after those um, grants or, or other things. So uh, some of that is in the works um, as part of our trainings. Okay. Uh-huh. Anything else we want to uh, let the people know about? Oh, I do have a question for you. So I've, I've interviewed a lot of nonprofits, organizations for this specific program, and I found that a lot of them don't have much of a presence online, branding, um, you have any tips for them? Any any tips for these organizations who are like, man, we, we, we need to connect with more people. People don't know we exist. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I would say I think that social media is like a great way to get people. But I feel like networking like in person and just like kind of having a card on you. Just like I have my I have my what is it called? Your business card. card. Oh, <laughs> I wish that's like next level. 
I'm almost there. No, it's not. I got one. I got one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's nothing crazy. I have one. You just, you know. But I, so usually I'll just like hem my card and just be like, hey, like I take pictures. That's, that's like my sweet spot. Like I really like taking photos. Like I'm, like I'm good with branding, but I feel like there's just like a lot of power in images. Um, And so I usually encourage people to like start sharing things that way and just being like honest, because then like when people come to get whatever service that you're offering, whether it's like, like stuff that we do here with the service or photos or they're making smoothies, it's like then they like see like they kind of have an expectation already. Mm -hmm. And then like you already have yourself out there and it's not like you're putting on some type of front. And so I think that like doing stuff in person, like going to different networking stuff or just like community events, like trainings here, um, like people kind of talk and then you like learn people do car detailing and people like are personal chefs. And so then you like you're offering what you have and then you're learning what they have. And then it's not like you posted something on social media. It's like you had this real conversation with them. Okay. And then they can also like if they think that you're great, then they tell other people too. What do you say about those who don't have a branding department? When I was talking with Trails and they said, well, we don't have the, I'm like, I think that art, branding, all of that is a needed investment. I don't really even think it's like a cost. It's a, it's a need. It's like breathing. Yeah. I think for me, I'm huge on storytelling and like, just like knowing like the surface level of what Trails does. I think it's like just getting your story out there, just like talking about it and saying like positive things. Right. Like, I, I think that the way that you talk about your community or your thing or your business or your family, like, there's, like, a huge, there's, like, huge aftermath of, like, how you talk about something. So if you're saying, like, good positive things about what you do and or, like, who you work for, I think that that storytelling goes a long way. Facts. I also think, like, for organizations like Trails or us or others, Sometimes the key is thinking about how can you share this role with, you know, like in our in our gig economy now, you know, it doesn't have to be like this full time position of, you know, a marketing director or something like that. It can be, you know, like, oh, you know, there's there's these three organizations and they all have this need. Well, can you put together, can you come together, collaborate and hire one person across three organizations um, to tell your story. Uh, Akira does some of that, like with in her role now. She's shared between organizations, um, and it's a way for smaller, smaller, you know, organizations, nonprofits to to share resources and come up with the things that they need. That's genius. Yeah. And it's like when you come up with like a social media plan, like there you can kind of go off of like things that you value or things that are really important. So like, here we sometimes we'll talk about our values or sometimes we'll introduce our staff and it's kind of just like we're still telling the story of Aliquippa in different like in different ways. And so I think again, like it comes back to like storytelling is huge. Right. I I love that idea. How does that work? Like is like as far as funding, like who does the paying? Like how do they come together? Because you know, you gotta keep business and separate. I mean personal separate. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess that doesn't matter for this interview, but I'm definitely interested in that. So we'll talk more about it. Um, But uh, yeah, if you guys don't have any other announcements or events or anything coming up that you want to let the people know about, we can uh, go ahead and. I think, I mean, again, I would just reiterate we're uh, opening up some slots for Cultivate in October. And so if people are interested in. If people have, you know, launched their business and they need some help getting that thing established, then they're welcome to apply uh, so they can you know message us on on social media or um, we'll be posting about that so they can follow that and and reply to those posts and we would love to get them the application for cultivate okay what's the cost the cost for cultivate is uh it's two hundred dollars for the whole year okay. uh, but if you go through the whole year, we give you that $200 back. Mm. Um, and we also can do a payment plan where we do $50 every quarter. So we break it up. And then if you go all the way through, we just give it back to you. That's what's up. We just want people to have some commitment, some skin in the game. Uh, we're not really trying to make a lot of money off of that. We just want them to be committed to what they're doing. Okay. 
Well, I thank you guys for what you do. I think this is big for the community, especially all lower income communities where the heart of entrepreneurship is at and what, what's needed to build our communities. And you guys are at the heart of that fight, man. So uh, big ups to y'all. Um, thank you guys for doing this interview. Thank you, Seth. We, I, I'm, I'm really happy with like the way you're highlighting things and the part that you play in our, in our community as well. Shit. Thanks. Appreciate